Chris, thank you so much for the time. Welcome to Screen Fishes Jericho. <laughs> nice. Thank you. <laughs> Honestly, I've been a fan for a very long time, so this is a real privilege. Um, well, I, let's let's talk about the Death Tour because this film is fantastic. It, it really is. It, it's something special. Um, how did you come to be involved with it? You know, having the experience with 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 actually being on one of these tours and knowing so many people uh, that have done them and just how how valuable it is to be involved um you know early in your career doing a tour like this you know from from a mental standpoint from a physical standpoint from an experience standpoint when i was asked to be involved i really uh, resonated with that you know i wanted to kind of add the touch that i had from being in the business and having these experiences because sometimes filmmakers when they do a movie about wrestling there's something missing because wrestling is such a unique and interesting form of entertainment that you almost need somebody to go listen this is how this works better it's going to res it, you know it's going to it's going to play better on camera doing this and then also from a filmmaker standpoint you know I've, I, I've produced a couple documentaries now so looking at it from that side of the coin having an extra set of eyes on it was valuable too so um it was a great collaboration between the directors and producers and and, and myself as to what i could add to the film you know, I absolutely appreciate that because one of the things that I love about this film so much is is how it gets behind the ring, gets beyond the mat into the lives of the performers and and the the tour itself, the power of the tour itself. But one of the things that sort of comes up, or at least comes up with the performers, is there's at moments there's this blurring of the lines between reality and fiction, and I'm sure this you've experienced this too. You know, you see these these characters or these. I say these characters on the mat, but you see the real people and they're struggling behind the scenes. What is it like to bring that into the ring and how do you know where to where to draw the line? Well, I mean, obviously, you know, that's the reason another reason why this is such a riveting film is, is yes, you do your match and that's 20 minutes. But what about the other 23 and a half hours of the day, um, you know, that, that you're traveling to get to these shows uh, and they're very far up north. So you could be in, a, in the van for 12 hours you know driving through this frozen tundra and then you get to the high school gym and you have to set up the ring and then you do the show and then you take the ring down and then you put your sleeping bag on the floor of the gym and sleep overnight and you're buying you know a roast beef sandwich for 20 bucks and that's not an exaggeration like everything's very expensive up up north so you're thinking why am i even doing this but yet you know, a year later, you're like, man, I can't wait to go on, on the death tour again, you know, because it is a valuable experience to, to be involved with when you're first starting out. You know, it really helps you um, prove to yourself that you really want to be involved. And also for the people that are watching the shows. I mean, it's an annual uh, chance to see something very cool and be involved with something very cool that kind of breaks up the monotony of what it's like to live on a reservation because there's not a lot going on. So there's so many sides to, to the coin that we wanted to capture in, in this film. And, and we, I think we did a pretty good job of doing that. You really did. And these communities that you're traveling to, that the, the tour is taking, I mean, you hear the story, story after story after story of heartbreak in these communities, but they still come out in droves for this, uh, which is not to belittle the show at all, but it, it is the thing that people come out to and right. are excited to be at. So what is it that, that wrestling brings to these communities in your well, mind? Well, I mean, once again, you know, you know, the, the stones aren't coming to town. You know what I mean? Like there's not a lot of, you know, Jerry Seinfeld isn't doing shows in, in, in blood vein, Manitoba. So, you know, Tony Candelo is, and I think when, when you have this chance to know, like once a year, wrestling's coming to town, I think it's probably a pretty big deal, not just for the elders in the community. And that's why they book the shows. I mean, the chief is booking these shows mm. in 2023. Every reservation has a chief, you know, you're thinking chief with, with a big headdress and, and war paint. No, no, this is a chief wearing, you know, a hoodie and jeans, but he's in charge of, of this community. And I think bringing in, you know, a wrestling show once a year gives that community something fun to rally around um, and, and I think that really breaks up the monotony of, of being up there, like I said. So it's important, not only to the wrestlers from an experience standpoint, but, you know, you see in the film, all the kids just going crazy for these wrestlers and it's their version of, of Chris Jericho, you know, or, or, you know, Roman Reigns coming to town, 
yeah. is these, these local wrestlers, these independent wrestlers they never probably never even heard of, but it doesn't matter. They can see them and feel them and touch them and be a part of this experience together in their local community center. That's invaluable. And you know, it's wild. Like you see these moments near the end of the film, Matriarch is standing there and they're saying, you always win for us. Man, that's a powerful moment. It's powerful. Um, well, Matriarch is also, you know, Indigenous. She's First yeah. Nation as well. And that's something else that's like, she's she's an example to these kids that you can go and do something else other than just be on this reserve or be turn into a drug addict or, or, or commit suicide. And unfortunately, that's something that, that, that these people deal with on a daily basis. I mean, these shows, the wrestling shows get canceled all the time because there's a death on the reservation yeah. happen it happens it happens in our movie yeah you know uh somebody dies and 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 you shut the community down because it is such a dark place and can be such a depressing place so with with sage with matriarch she is you know one of these people so to speak you know it might not be the same tribe but but she's first nation as well and so the kids can go wow she's a wrestler you know and she came from a reservation too well, maybe I can be a wrestler, you know, and that's kind of what it's all about is you're giving people a, a chance to believe that there's something beyond just this small world that we live in. And that's what we all want, a chance to, to just to, to do whatever you want to do. With that in mind, you know, one of the things that I think this film sort of taps into again with with the performance, also with the communities, but with the performers, too, like you hear their stories. I I could be wrong. I think it's massive damage talks about um how there he was into he was into drugs and then when he was 24 he found professional wrestling and i was wondering as a performer yourself and and being involved not just on these tours but in wrestling tours in these communities is there a sense of healing in this type of environment is there some sort of new life that can come from being a part of it well i mean yeah of course there is you know and i think once again on both sides of the coin you know being in the ring is, you know, why would you want to do a tour like this? Well, because this is what we do. And when you're just starting out, the more jobs you can get, the better. And especially when you can get a chance to do, you know, it's like touring Japan. You've heard so much about Japan and I want to go experience it for myself. And when you're spending three weeks in Japan, it's not easy. And I think the, the death tour is one of those, you know, kind of legendary, uh, you know, experiences as a, as a young wrestler that you hear about, especially a young wrestler in Canada you want to do it and find out for yourself just how hard is it and it's the same thing for for the people watching once again like i said you want to be involved and and dreams can can like i say dreams can come true but but dreams can really be uh promoted in in a moment like this where the person in the ring gets to live the dream uh, of being a superhero and the people in the crowd can see real life superheroes. So it is kind of a really cool experience for, for both involved. And once again, we captured that uh, very well in, in the death tour. And that's what we set out to do. Yeah. It comes across uh, absolutely. Like we, we see that the stories of these characters are, again, I use the term characters. I apologize. The stories of these very real people, in the ring and outside the ring and how much this tour matters to them. And I can see it's mattered to you. Um, and this, I really appreciate the chance to chat with you about it. It's a wonderful film, just incredible. Thank you so much for the time. No, thanks, man. And, that, and that's what we wanted to capture. And the fact that, you know, we're premiering at such a prestigious festival of slam dance, it shows that we did a pretty good job. You know, here we are about, you know, doing a documentary about small town pro wrestling, essentially. Uh, and 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 getting a chance to show it on such a major stage of slam dance proves that we did a pretty good job of making this film. Yeah, it comes Thanks out great. Guys. Thanks so much for your time. I really appreciate, appreciate it, Chris. Have a great day. <laughs>